right, we are ready to roll. This will be a uh, 365-day devotional, simple oil changes, Mark 10, 27. All right, 365-day devotional, Mexicator's book, God is with you every day in trains and in airplanes. In the water, 100 feet down. Go any farther than that, you're just silly. It's just very silly to go deeper than 100 feet, unless you're looking for the Titanic. And it was found way deep down there. Mm-hmm. Yep, yeah, don't need to. <laughs> Leave that to the professionals. This will be a 365 day devotional for June 21st. Simple oil changes. It's been a great day. This will be a good one. Let's see. Uh, Jesus looked at them and said, With men it is impossible, but with God, but not with God, for with God all things are possible. Mark 10 27. Hey, Stormy. Jesus looked at them and said, With men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God all things are possible. Mark 10, 27. When I was 15 years old, I inherited a Rambler station wagon from my big brother. It wasn't much to look at, but it was mine. You have to keep gas in the tank, Dad advised. I know. Air in the tires, I know. Can you change the oil and keep the car washed? Of course I can. I lied. My ineptness surfaced the following Saturday. It was time to change the oil in the Rambler. You want me to help you, Dad asked? I should have said yes. Instead, I spent an hour looking for the oil pan, and another hour wrestling with the plug. I finally removed it, drained the oil, crawled out, and poured in five new quarts. Finished at last, or so I thought. Dad was waiting for me in the garage. All done? All done. Then what is that? He pointed to the river of oil running down the driveway. Clean oil. I'd forget, forgotten to replace the plug. Son, I fix things for a living. What is hard for you is simple to me. Let me help you. I'm a mechanic and besides, I'm your dad. Here is what I think. Our toughest challenges are simple oil changes to God. Yeah, he's the master of it all. He has created it all. He is our father God, created an entire universe and every creepy crawly thing in it. Anything that lives, he breathed life into all of it from all the plants and everything. Ah, that's the kind of father that we want. And some of us have that type of father on earth here, right now with us, that uh, is always there for us to teach us how, how things work and teach us about life. And to be there for us uh, to, to talk to and to be the shoulder to cry on or just somebody, uh, yeah, just to encourage or inspire you. Some of us had that. Uh, but if you didn't, remember that you've got a Father, a God in heaven that loves you so much, and that is our Heavenly Father. And no matter what's happened to you, if you're a foster child, if you were dropped off and abandoned when you were younger, you always have our Father, God in heaven, looking after you. And He's with you all the time, and we get to participate in what He is doing in our lives and lives of others and across the entire world. So ask for His help. He's done all of this before, just like with His Son Jesus. Jesus has experienced all of this before, just in the short 33 years of His life. He's experienced everything. Everything, everything. Most of it happened in the last probably uh, 10 or so days when the Romans started to come, really come after Him, and the crowds turned turned against him and that's when he really started to experience a lot of the things a lot of the things in the bible back then in the new testament and possibly in the uh very likely in the old testament still apply today because we still go through the same struggles because the same sin is still in us but if you give it all to jesus surrender to jesus and it is uh leave it at the cross because of what was done at the cross it is all forgiven and cleansed and God does not condemn you which means God does not judge you people may judge you but what does it matter what they think it only matters what God thinks and God loves you and thinks you're awesome he knew you before you were in your mother's womb and he created you and he created you for a purpose so he's your father you have full access to him through Jesus Christ so talk to him I know it's hard but if you had your father when you in the room uh, what would you say to him?
I was with my father on Father's Day all day. Perfect day. Perfect, perfect. But still, there is a barrier between me and him because he's not a believer, but I think he is now. I'm pretty sure, but he just has so much pride and uh, machismo in him that he's not going to admit it. But I think his heart has softened. And uh, so I, I still spoke with him, but I let him speak more, and I was just a better listener. It's in the past. I mean, when I first lived with him, when I went back and graduated college and lived with him for about a year, because uh, he was sick, and I just wanted a better relationship with him and other reasons. Uh, me and him used to talk all the time and hang out all the time. I wasn't working for three months, and I would go to work with him, but uh, I would try to tell him how I thought he should live and what could help him, especially since he had a medical problem, and that was kind of my profession. I was kind of, I knew a lot about medical and health and fitness. Uh, other than the fitness, the medical part of it. Um, once you start knowing the, the basic anatomy and the physiology of the body, uh, you can kind of have an understanding of how uh, things affect it. So I was given a lot of advice, but he didn't want it at all. No, no, in one ear and out the other. Still to this day, it's the same thing. It wouldn't matter. It wouldn't matter to some people, especially when your sons and daughters uh, telling your parents uh, what they should and shouldn't do. Just like when parents are telling kids what they should and shouldn't do. It usually takes a, a third party. But they'll listen to other people. But uh, where was I going with that? But my father, I try to talk with him. And I try my best. But sometimes it's better to be a better listener. And sometimes he just needed somebody to talk to. And he just wanted to talk. So it went really well. Yeah. Two hours in a car down. And now we're driving around two hours in a car back. I mean... Not too much was said from me, but a lot listened to and gave him anything that he wanted. And a lot of grace has been showed to me uh, from Father God, from Jesus. So I show a lot of grace to people. But, uh, grace needs to be recognized. It's just like the, not throwing the pearls to pigs kind of deal, the, the Bible verse on that. Put it out there, but it needs to be recognized that God has showed you grace. I hear some noises. I hear those noises. So, yep, because of the grace that's been shown to us, I mean, we recognize that um, because the grace that's been shown to me, uh, I love God for that. And it, it proves that He's really always loved me and always been there for me and always waiting for me. Just like the story of Prodigal Son in Luke 15. Even though son went far away, took his inheritance, and it wounded the father's heart. It wounded it, which is the saddest thing ever to say that. It wounded the father's heart when the son took off and wanted his inheritance, but still he gave him what he wanted. But when his son was finished and, and blew all the inheritance and worked with the pigs and ate the pig's food and slept outside, and even though then the son surrendered and decided to come back to his father, even though the son was still yet far off, far, far off, the father was waiting for him every day, patiently, patiently. Even though the son was far, far off, hardly unrecognizable, picture that dirt road way down and some uh, dirty kind of looking like homeless person is coming down the road. It could only be one person. That's my son. And the father ran to him and ran. This was not part of the culture. But the father ran to him with arms wide open and embraced him. And the son thought he wasn't deserving of it, but he was. So the father threw him a party and a celebration. And killed the fatted calf and just put on his best linens and the purple robe and all that. My son, who was once was dead, is now alive and that's the way we celebrate now for people that get saved uh unsaved people life's pretty good but we i don't know everybody's individual life and the trials that they go through trials do happen to everybody but it is perspective on how you handle it where you get your strength from but uh i tell you the truth i'd rather have god on my side with me working through that with and knowing that he is with me and if anybody is against, if God is for me, who can be against me? And yeah, so 
a loving Father like that. That's what we're all really looking for. And you have a guarantee in that through Jesus Christ that our Father is the most loving. God is love. So if you want love, this will teach you how to do it. So, Because we're all missing that. I don't care if you're, like a lot of people know, I like the beach. I don't care if you got a house on the beach and every morning I do my worship walks or walks with God in the neighborhood, nice neighborhood, but I don't care if you're walking on Longboat Key, you got your 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 house and your your boat there and you're doing your morning walks along the beach or morning 5Ks on the beach. If you don't have God, there's going to be that emptiness. There's nothing that will fulfill that emptiness because that is what we yearn for. We were made to worship. We were made to be with God. So so uh, put it to the test can put it to the test and I did and it worked so I surrendered I was like yeah okay all some a lot of people that I respect were telling me some things and I was like wow okay I respect you also I'm gonna test this out and it is true so uh, we have access to our father as for his help all right always be in prayer pray especially pray and talk to talk to God have a relationship with him but pray for people always be in continual prayer for people and your friends and co-workers and Prayer works. God knows they're all all their hearts. So if he's doing a work inside of them, if you don't see prayers answered for them, he's doing a work inside of them. Uh, he's spoken with them if they're not surrendering. Uh, that's on them. But he'll keep putting people in their life, person after person. One departs, one comes open. One departs, one comes back. One departs, one comes back. And you're getting hit from all sides, but you won't recognize it. And some really, really cool people will come in your life. But the enemy also knows for us that are Christians and saved and doing really awesome things in our lives. Bad people will try to come into our life and cause drama, but they will leave. And bad person will try to cause drama, and they will leave. Bad situation will come. And with the Father, with the Holy Spirit, we're able to recognize it and yeah, nothing can happen. Nothing can happen. And God will never allow anything greater than you can handle. Nothing. Like I've said in a past devotional, just like in the Bible with Job, Job and who else? He will allow the enemy to sift you. That's what it says in the Bible. Yes, that is my faithful servant. I allow you. See what you can do. I bet he'll remain faithful. Uh, yeah, it's my child. It's my son. Sometimes it's like uh, Navy SEAL buds training, special warfare, spec ops type stuff. Go through that three months of boot camp. Go through that one year specialized training. If you survive, you are going to be blessed way beyond, and you'll see. So when you know there's a storm, you know something awesome is about to happen. Even when you know there's a calm, you know about some big transition in your life is about to happen uh, where you need rest rest before the big race so it's kind of cool stuff there's a lot you can go on and on but i seem to get off on tangents but there's so much to say about how wonderful our god is and uh, uh and we're called to tell everybody about it jesus says it so it's, <sighs> that's our lord lord jesus christ i mean we're gonna we're gonna do what he says right because it's pleasing to the father we want to please our father right good put us here for a reason we're here to worship and be obedient that is it and fulfill our purpose get back to heaven and that is it so cool all right i guess that's it 365 day devotional uh we got three minutes let me see i'm gonna keep going uh, a little bit if anybody is listening i don't know there's mr ralph uh let's see what mark is saying today matthew and mark See this in context, what Mark 10 is about. Hmm. Who is the greatest? Oh, it's in divorce? What? Little children. Now I know that one. We just did that. Um, Jesus then left that place and went into the region of Judea and across the Jordan. Again, crowds of people came to him and was... As was his custom, he taught them. Some Pharisees came and tested him by asking, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? 
What did Moses command you? He replied. They said Moses permitted a man to write a certificate of divorce and send her away. It was because your hearts were hard that Moses wrote you this law, Jesus replied. But at the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife. And the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two but one. Therefore, what God has joined together, let man not separate. When they were in the house again, the disciples asked Jesus about this. He answered, Anyone who divorces his wife and marries another woman commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another man, she commits adultery. So, little children of Jesus. People were bringing little children to Jesus to have him touch them, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God belongs to such of these. I tell you the truth, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms, put the hands on them, and blessed them. Uh, wow, we're looking at Mark 10, 27. Uh, Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard is it for the rich to enter the kingdom of God? The disciples were amazed at the words, but Jesus said again, Children, how hard is it to enter the kingdom of God? It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were even more amazed and said to each other, Who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, With man this is possible, but not with God all things. But not with God. All things are possible with God. Peter said to them, We have left everything to follow you. I tell you the truth, Jesus replied. No one who has left home or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for me and... The gospel will fail to receive a hundred times as much in this present age. Homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and fields, and with them persecution. <laughs> and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. So that is it. And persecution. I hear all that, but persecution. Love you guys. 365 Day Devotional, Mark 10. See ya.